Hi, this is Asa, and welcome to my audio experience. If the body can get sick, you can also get well. It's about lifestyle, so the choices we make today can and will determine the kind of health we're going to have tomorrow. So our choices matter. What we do matters, and it matters every single day. No one can take responsibility for your health or your life but you. And so you have to make those respon- those responsible choices to be healthy. But, you know, the cool thing about it is, is that whatever we do, doesn't matter if you're, if you're eating healthier, starting a new exercise routine, adding certain foods into your diet, modifying your lifestyle, managing your stress, sleeping better, whatever it is. It's about lifestyle. So what we give ourselves, what we give our bodies every single day, the tools we give it, the nutrition that we give, all of that matters. And so no one is going to help take responsibility for your health more than you. And so you got to step up and really help take responsibility to make an impact and help. Because really, it's it comes down to what you do every single day. It's not some magical formula and just magic pill. It is something that we have to work on each day. Very, very important. Gardening is a big topic. And now one thing I'll tell you is that gardening does not count as exercise. Okay. And they may say it does, but I'm telling you, that's not the kind of exercise that's going to yield really good health benefits for you. There's a, there's a lot more work that has to be done uh, than just that. All right. But nonetheless, gardening is good and it's a good thing and it's healthy for you. So spending time in a garden can help soothe the agitation of commonly strikes people with dementia. So when you look at about 17 past studies, British researchers found that evidence that watering plants or sitting or strolling in a garden can help soothe some dementia patients' anxiety. So dementia, as it progresses, it's common for people to become anxious, restless, and agitated. According to the Alzheimer's Association, sometimes there's a medical reason, such as chronic pain, and the person with dementia just can't explain it. So Dr. Mark Stecker, who's uh, the chairman of neurosciences at Winthrop University Hospital in, in New York, he said that although the problem stems from dementia itself, families and caregivers can often uh, try reassurance of a calm presence, but just a nice smile can help, really. So even when we can't understand the language, we know from time that we're children that what a smile means, that it's great. So it's also helpful to dementia patients as a distraction, playing a game or or taking a car ride, but what makes sense, they say, is the fact that gardening is making such a big difference is going out in the garden and just being there around the, the small amount of work that it takes, but yet the meticulousness of it is is extremely uh, healthy for the brain. The brain has certain instincts that even with dementia that it can can pull on from memory to be able to to do those daily tasks. And so that can be very, very helpful with those basic instincts, uh, which is interesting. really is. It's a very, very cool thing. So even when the brain's impaired, it goes back to its basic instincts. And gardening, for a lot of people, can be that. So if you – one of the things I just don't like to see, and I know it has to happen with some people – but one of the things I just don't like to see is is people that just the the, the elderly that are, are forgotten, people that get dementia that are forgotten, and they're just kind of pushed to the side. They're still living people, and they still have hopes, they still have dreams, they still have desires, they still have uh, a life. And when they're considered out of the productive side of society, then they're they're they tend to be discarded, and I don't think it's right. I don't think it's fair either. So I think that, that we have to find activities for our loved ones that have been dealing with some of these disease or health challenges and give them options to, to have a higher quality of life. I think that's extremely important, more than anything, so they can make a difference. Powerful to see somebody's life change in a great way. 888 And there you can find all the help that you need to really be able to thrive with your health. Let's go to Mary. Hi, Mary. I've got a problem with my fingernails. They're, they're all starting to split from the top all the way down to the cuticle or breaking off, and it all started all of a sudden. All right. Well, and one of the big keys you got to look at when the splitting of the nails, a lot of times there's a, 
there's certain vitamin or mineral deficiencies that can be causing that. And you can do some blood testing, figure out what that is. You can do a simple little blood test that will will give you an overview of, of what might be going on inside there. And that is a, a really big tool to be able to help. I would check that out first and foremost. Now, the other thing, too, you want to look at that that's important uh, in the splitting of the nails, too, is is iron okay they're, they're out of those vitamin and mineral deficiencies a lot of times iron can be the culprit but sometimes it's not just not having enough iron sometimes it can be the 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 absorption of your iron you may not be absorbing enough and that really can become a bit of an issue and that's what you want to look at okay so the challenge is making sure that everything balances that's the bigger key all right because at the end of the day if, if you do have nutritional deficiencies, they're not balancing out where they need to be, then there's a bit of a challenge there. So I would get some testing done. Your physician or get one, in touch with one of our lifestyle providers, and they can do some of that testing. Or our clinics, the Center for Lifestyle Medicine, we have multiple clinics that can help you along the way. All right, 888-283-7272. That's 888-283-7272. Lines are open with questions about your health. Now, fruit is powerful. I, I talk about it quite a bit. But fruit, they say now, every day can help your heart. And I think that's really, really a cool thing and, and really interesting as well. Just because if fruits and vegetables we know are healthy for us, right? But 1.5% of Americans actually eat vegetables. We eat more fruit than we eat vegetables. Probably because it's sweet. But they did a study, a large study out of China, and it suggests that eating fresh fruit regularly can help prevent heart attacks and strokes. And adults who ate fresh fruit, like apples and oranges, every day had about one third uh, of reduction of dying from a heart attack or stroke. Matter of fact, fruit consumption is important for cardiovascular health, said lead researcher Dr. Liming V, who is a vice president of Chinese Academy of Medical Sciences in Beijing. But the study participants who ate fruit more often had lower blood pressure and blood sugar and less frequent fruit eaters. So, again, they did a study on this with, a, with about 500,000 adults aged 30 to 79 who had no history of heart disease. And fewer than one in five ate fruit on a daily basis. Over seven years, those who ate the equivalent of roughly half a cup of fruit a day had significantly lower risk of major cardiovascular disease, a study found. This is on the New England Journal of Medicine. And the two U.S. experts weighed in on this. They said cardiovascular disease is the leading cause of avoidable and premature death globally. So previous studies have shown that diets high in fruit are associated with a lower risk of heart disease. Powerful. Sweet, delicious, easy to eat, and makes a tremendous difference in our overall health. 888-283-7272. If you're looking for increased strength, increased endurance, and better recovery, then look no further than an all-natural nutritional supplement called creatine hydrochloride. Concrete is the brand, and it's the most absorbable form of creatine hydrochloride found today. Now, creatine is not just for athletes. You've probably heard that before, but concrete creatine hydrochloride is for the everyday person looking to improve their health. Listen, I started taking creatine in college when I was a strength conditioning coach at Florida State University, and I've taken it ever since my college years, and it's made a massive difference in my life. Everything in my body, I believe, is functioning better because of creatine. Creatine hydrochloride I've moved over to using concrete, and it is the best form of creatine on the market. Concrete creatine hydrochloride is available at most Walmart stores and on walmart.com or any store that carries nutritional supplements. Just make sure to look for concrete brand creatine hydrochloride and watch your endurance, your strength, and your recovery, and your immune system get boosted today. To find out more, connect with On Call Radio online at InShapeNetwork.com.
We're always here for you each and every day. Your health care on demand because we're here. All original health programming, health and wellness and medical clinics called the Center for Lifestyle Medicine, where your lifestyle is your medicine. Providers to give you the care that you need. Natural organic supplements to be able to help you and support you along the way. Protocols, eating protocols, strategies, exercise protocols, how to get your health back, how to build your health back, all of that. It's your health, right? That's It's your greatest wealth, and that's what we're here for each and every day, to support you and help you and equip you. That's what it's about. Karen, you're next on the line. How can I help? Recently, I had to go up to the emergency room because I had some severe pain, and I was diagnosed with acute pancreatitis and was told to go on a certain liquid uh, type fast for a few days to bring the inflammation down. And um, I've been following that diet. Um, however, I have, I have slipped up in the fact that I've been eating boiled eggs to bring my protein level up because I have hypoglycemia and I get really, really tired. Mm-hmm. And I don't know what I can do to keep my energy level up uh, without the protein. Um, the the uh, drinks like Gatorade and stuff, um, they can irritate my system and also give me migraines. Okay. Yeah, a couple of things you've got to look at. First, we've got to figure out what the deficiencies are. It's a big one, right? So even with any areas, pancreas, whatever area you're talking about, you've got to figure out why the body's breaking down in the first place. So it's the root cause. And, and again, sometimes we, we don't know, but a lot of times we do. And the blood work and some other basic testing that can be done clinically can really help get those numbers. You can figure out exactly what's there you can easily see what's happening inside the body what what is what's not and and build a good solid game plan so that's where i would start and and again simply it's not just something as simple as as take this herb or eat this berry or or do that it it really comes down to more of an overall game plan of what your body needs that that really is the ultimate key and, and the first thing you want to focus in on. All right. Triple eight two eight three seven two seven two. Give us a call. So annual C O P D costs are going to hit about forty nine billion by twenty twenty. All right. C D C said this the medical costs for chronic obstructive pulmonary disease in the United States are more than thirty two billion each year. According to new research from the US Centers for Disease Control and Prevention the yearly financial toll of COPD, which includes emphysema and chronic bronchitis, is expected to reach an estimated $49 billion. So for the first time, analysis provides different like state-specific costs for COPD. And the medical costs associated with COPD are primarily paid for by Medicare. So COPD forced Americans to miss an estimated 16 million days of work, costing nearly about $4 billion. Overall, COPD, which is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, it's a serious lung condition that creates scarring and it is very challenging to a lot of people. It's, it's chronic. It's in a lower respiratory uh, area. It's the third leading cause of death in the U.S., according to the news release. So roughly 80% of COPD-related deaths are due to smoking. And in 2010, the condition claimed almost 135,000 lives in the United States. Following year, it was estimated about 13 million adults in the U.S. had COPD. So again, it's it's smoking is a big deal, right? And so it's one of those situations that we have to do everything we can to make the right choices. If you have COPD, just know that there's a lot you can do with your lifestyle to unwind that and to get things back where they need to be. You don't have to be stuck. You really can unwind a a lot of it by making better choices. L-taurine, there was a study that came out, L-taurine, T-A-U-R-I-N-E. It's an amino acid. It can help regenerate a lot of what's lost with with the, the smoking. So it can help rejuvenate a lot of the lung tissue, there was a study done about that. So, again, nothing is, is promised and, and nothing is presented as a complete rehabilitation on that. 
but there is some hope that they say about every eight years your lungs can regenerate from the point for the damage that was done from the smoking. So it's pretty cool. The body regenerates. It's very, very neat how that can happen. And now you can give your body a second lease on life many times. Triple eight two eight three seven two seven two. I'm America's health coach, as always, here for you. And you can give me a call. Go to triple eight two eight three seven two seven two. Whenever you're struggling with anything, we're here for you. That's what this whole show is about to give you a better life, a better lifestyle, to make better choices, to be able to live and thrive and do better. All of that really does make a difference. So a lot of the gene mutations are happening right now. Genetic mutation seems to be ramping up in the brain now that we're getting a better understanding of how mutation triggers feeling of pleasure and gratification. So obesity is typically caused by a combination of overeating, lack of physical activity, and genetics. So the most common genetic cause of obesity is a mutation in the melanocortin-4 receptor gene. This is British research. Found in the Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism, scientists compared eight people who are obese and had the MC4R gene mutation with 10 people who were overweight or obese that did not have it. Using functional MRI scans, study authors observed how pictures of tempting foods such as chocolate cake activated the reward centers of the brains. The response to the photos of appetizing foods was then compared to the different groups. And surprisingly, participants who were the same age and weight had different responses to those. Those with a genetic mutation were stimulated more. Pretty amazing. So there is genetic component to it. It's not everything, but it's genetics. And you can overcome your genetics. I always say you can beat genetics in a lot of ways with our lifestyle choices and what we commit to do each day. 888-283-7272. Hi, it's Asa. I'm giving you a copy of my best-selling book for free to help you in your health journey today. I'll pay for the book. All you do is just cover the small shipping and handling costs. Go to AsaRx.com and get your free book today. To find out more, visit the show online, InShapeNetwork.com. Are you living in shape? In Shape University is what it's all about. It's about getting your life in shape, whether it's exercise, getting moving, getting lean. A lot of people want to get the abs, the six-pack. They want to have fit and trim and the V, and they want to get rid of the hips and the thighs. But I think getting in shape is something that we all want. Fit is healthy. Strong is the new thin, as they say, and, and strong is healthy. So it's not so much just about looking like the latest Hollywood star, but it's really about getting in shape. You know, it, it really is about living a healthy lifestyle. And that's what this is about. And, and that's what I love really pushing people for is to get in shape. You know, it's funny because when I was in, in high school and middle school and played sports my whole life, they would always say, you've got to get in shape, time to get in shape, got to go stay after practice, run extra to get in shape. And that was always a concept that reigned with me. Of, of what it meant to, to be in shape. It's like there's there's always life is is in season all the time. Like we have to be in shape. I want to be in shape every day. I don't want to be able to not walk upstairs. I want to be able to do a pull-up. I want to be able to do a push-up. I want to be able to go water ski. I want to be able to snow ski and not say, well, I'm this age, so I can't do that anymore because I might break something or I might tear something. Like I hear that a lot by people, and it's like, when is it that you turn 60 or 70 and you can't go snow skiing anymore? Like, what's up with that? You're worried you're going to break a hip? Really? I mean, I, when I when I go and do these sporting things that I do, I snowboard. I'm a huge snowboarder. Love it. And uh, and, and water skiing and, and, and wakeboarding and, and do these events, uh, these sports that I do that I, I really enjoy and I love. When I get out and do these things, it, it's interesting just to watch people and – and listen to people and how they really think because it's amazing to see that some people really just think that at a certain age, it's time to hang it up. 
or you gain 50 pounds, so you just can't do that anymore. And it's just that's part of your youth. That, that was then. It's not now. That was back then, not now. But the reality is that we can still stay in shape and do the things we need to do. But I will tell you this, that as we as you get into different decades of life, it's important that you maintain your flexibility. It's important that you maintain your core strength, and it's important that you maintain your overall strength to keep your body in, in a certain place so that you can function well. And and one of those keys, as much as I would say exercise five to six days a week, I would say move at least six days a week. I don't care what it is. You have to do something six days a week to get your body moving. And if you're high intensity all the time, you want to go five and take two days off. So I'm okay with that. If you really push hard, you can go, go five days and take two off. But you really got to get out and get moving. I mean, it is important. So what I want to talk about to help get in shape is kind of the opposite of that is recovery. And I think it's something that we don't put enough emphasis on, but yet we need to, right? So even if you go to the extreme and you start exercising, I know people that work out seven days a week, don't ever take time off. That's crazy. Your body can't handle that. So recovery is as much important to not get injured as it is. And this is to, if you, if you're, if you're focused on losing body fat and getting lean and getting healthy, your recovery methods are as important as your workout methods. And it's important to get the two together. So recovery is everything. So I want to talk about what to do to really get the best recovery possible. Now, number one is you want to look at at doing some things for sore muscles. So fitness-related sore muscle or muscle soreness is is so common that it has a name. They actually gave it a clinical name. It's called DOMS, Delayed Onset Muscle Soreness. And so what happens is that the delayed onset, onset muscle soreness sets in a day or two following a strenuous fitness routine caused by the microscopic tears within the muscle tissue created during an intense exercise activity it's a cool listen here's the thing i gotta tell you i'm addicted to it i've been doing it since i was like 17 okay and i am literally addicted to that doms if that's my addiction then i'm cool with that all right if i don't get that soreness on the second day I will tell myself, you are the biggest wuss because you didn't push hard enough in your workout. You know, what were you thinking? How could you ever do, and and this is such a, this is such a funny comment. You may not relate to this at all. And you may think, and you're crazy. I cannot believe that to be sore. That's why I don't work out because I I can't walk the next day. Well, then it's good that you can't walk walk the next day and you're sore and it, it hurts to sit down on the toilet. Like get moving. It's better than sitting around and doing nothing. But really, if I don't have that soreness, then I feel like I didn't work hard enough. If I, if I, I feel like I wussed out. I really do. So it's one of those things that we really have to focus in on. But DOMS is is great. But here's the thing: if it lasts too long, I mean, I've had soreness like that last a week, and so if that soreness lasts a long time, it can really impede. You, it's too much, and you got to make sure you're recovering well enough, and and not being stuck in that because you you have to recover with this sort of thing it's 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 vital you have to get the recovery in for your body or your performance will suffer and your performance suffers you can get injured and then you can't work out as frequently as you want to and that's a big deal so getting in shape it's important to recover so here's a couple ways to to improve your recovery number one is stretch stretching before your workout and after your workout what we call dynamic stretching or static stretching, different types. Those the static are the kind you hold, you know, where you like re- lean, lean down and grab your hamstring, hold it. Or the the dynamic is where you movement. Like if you reach down to touch your toes and come all the way back up, that's what we call a dynamic stretch. Static is where you hold it. So warming up before weight training is another big one too. You want to get on and do some kind of stretching and and at least cardiovascular work, maybe five minutes of warm up. Before you get on the weights, I never walk into the gym and just start throwing the weights around. I, if you watch me, I go in. I'm very meticulous in the way I do this. I warm up for five minutes on a treadmill. I walk on an incline of about 5.5 and at about 3.7 miles an hour. And I t- stay at that pace for five to seven minutes till I feel warm. Then I go over and I'll go to the dumbbells and I'll grab some little five-pound dumbbells and I'll do all kinds of different range of motion with my shoulder. And little presses, side raises, rear raises, twisting movements to get my shoulders completely warmed up if I'm doing upper body. So I do that for five minutes. Then I go start warming up on my main 
area, like if I'm going to do back or if I'm going to do arms or shoulders or chest, then I go st- and get started on the, the moderate weight and then I go up to a heavy weight. Okay. I do all that so I don't get injured. Okay. But that's important for recovery too. You want to hydrate too. Hydration is important. Half your body weight in ounces of water every day. And, and again, if you're, if you're sweating a lot, live in higher cl- hot climates, you might want to increase that by about 25%. All right. Now, the workout with the correct form is important, too. This is extremely important for not getting injured and recovering well. So you want to be aware of your posture. You want to make sure that it, whatever exercise you're doing, you've got great form. Great form. There's no heavy weight with sloppy form that's going to outdo lighter weight with great form as far as building a healthy, strong body. Just not going to happen. Now, some of the post-workout methods that are really good to get rid of sore muscles and to help recovery is, is cryotherapy. So jump in an ice bath, basically you get into an ice bath or, and they have these actual locations now like cryotherapy therapy clinics where you can go in. It's not really a clinic, but go in and you can do cryotherapy. They even have the cryotherapy machines you can get at home. Those are really good. So you want to do that right after a workout. They did all kinds of clinical trials on this and found that muscle soreness was reduced. Matter of fact, all your elite athletes do cryotherapy to recover. If they're training every day or having to perform every day, they do cryotherapy for about 10 minutes. And it just improves their recovery in an amazing way. You want to heat up later in the day, too. A few hours after an intense fitness session, you can apply a heating pad or a heat source. Some muscle tightness is, is a big part of that. So heating pads are really good. Pineapple or tart cherries. Check this out. Bromelain is an enzyme found in pineapples. It's got strong anti-inflammatory benefits. But recent research also said that, that uh, anti-inflammatory power of tart cherries or tart cherry juice has also been shown to significantly reduce inflammation in the body. Pretty cool. So that's another tool you can use to really get in shape. Because, again, with, when you're getting in shape, what, if you want to lose body fat, tighten up. Get your body fit, really get healthy. The recovery aspect of your workouts are extremely important. So, you know, just to recap, you want to make sure that you stretch, whether it's dynamic holding or movement stretching, uh, which is uh, dynamic or static. And then you want to warm up for your weight training. If you're going to do any type of, war- of, of type of workout session, warm up. Spend five to ten minutes warming up. Never, never miss that. Hydrate yourself. Half your body weight in ounces of water every single day is going to help your body get in the best shape possible. Work out with correct form. Don't be sloppy. Jump in an ice bath or get in a cold shower for at least about two minutes after a workout, and it'll improve recovery. Heat up later in the day. You can always use heating pads on certain areas of the muscles that tend to get sore or joints that get sore. And consider using uh, pineapple or tart cherries a couple times a day. Who needs anti-inflammatories? Just eat a bunch of tart cherries, right? So your sore muscles, the day after your workout, you want to use them. Don't sit around and think my muscles are sore. The, the, the muscle soreness, well, it, we always say it kind of works itself out. That's not really what happens. But it helps the healing process of the blood flow. Uh, you can ice during recovery and massage therapy. Massage therapy is an extremely important aspect for muscle recovery and recovery after workout. So elite athletes all use those the cryotherapy and that makes a huge difference in your overall health so i would get started with some of these tools to really get your body in shape more information is at our website go check us out there if you look for a lifestyle provider someone to kind of take you by the hand and teach you what this really means check us out at our website or get to one of our clinics the center for lifestyle medicine multiple campuses around the country where we can help you we can coach people all around the world plus all natural supplements and protocols at our website that you can check out as well as our TV show, radio shows, and podcasts. We always love being with you to help you get in shape. Are you ready to chow? It's time for Keto Chow. When it comes to eating healthy, the keto diet has become one of the nutrition leaders in optimizing health, losing unwanted weight, and reaching your health and wellness goals. No extravagant cooking, no long kitchen cleanup, and most importantly, especially for me, 
It's convenient. Just put quality keto chow powder in a bottle, add some heavy whipping cream or your favorite fat, a little water, and boom, shake it up and you're ready to chow. Keto chow tastes amazing. So make keto chow easy for you and your family today with keto chow. Let's go chow. Visit keto chow online at ketochow.xyz. That's ketochow.xyz. Connect with On Call Radio and watch On Call TV at InShapeNetwork.com. Lines are open, 888-283-7272. That's 283 What are you struggling with? Let's talk about it. Your health, your life. Remember, if the body can get sick, it can also get well. That's the cool part of it. Our lifestyles are medicine. In so many different ways, our lifestyle can take us to the next level with our health and life. Let's get to the phones and talk to Trisha. Hi, Trisha. I'm calling because I had back surgery um, and I had long, beautiful hair and it all fell out after I had the surgery from the IV drugs they were giving me in the hospital. And um, I was just wondering, I think it's starting to grow back in now. And I was wondering what I could take to help it. Well, a couple things. We know that biotin is really good for the hair, but your omega-3 fatty acids are really important too. So cod liver oil is one of my favorites, but most fish oils are great depending on the quality. Fish oil can be very, very helpful. And the other thing that, that really is great too that you can you can check out and, and look at is to, to take a look at for your hair probiotics actually because when your gut's healthy, Everything in the body will be healthy. Zinc is really good too, and all your B vitamins. But biotin's a big one, and then your proteins. Okay, your your food sources, plenty of dark leafy green vegetables that makes a difference. But also your protein sources like chicken, fish, beef, or eggs. Eggs and fish are really really great. And if you're more on the vegetarian side, I get that. But just know that protein is extremely important for your hair, and it does make a big difference and the quality of it, but your fats and your fatty acids, avocados, monounsaturated fats, all that is, is very helpful in giving the hair that, that sheen and that shine and that quality. Remember, all the health that we get, that we have, comes from the inside out. So we really want to have health. You want to have it from the inside out. That's the, that's the big key that we have to look at is really building that more than anything else. Okay, and that's that's where you're going to get, especially with your hair, skin, hair, nails, all that. It, it really comes from the inside. It's not what we do so much from the outside that, that makes a difference. 888 is the number. You can give me a call. This is it's your health care on demand. I'm America's health coach. Always here to be with you, to help you, encourage you. Marshall in Hills or Hilldale, California, says, I need some exercise ideas. For someone that works 10 to 11 hours a day and doesn't have a lot of free time. Okay, cool. One of the things you got to do and look at with your exercise is don't ever tell yourself. Whenever you tell yourself anything negative, the brain shuts down. You always have to look at possibilities. You always have to tell yourself the possibilities. You always have to give yourself the possibilities so that you can thrive. Okay? Because if you want to hit your goals, you, then you have to you have to lay it out. That's very, very important. If you don't lay it out, it won't happen. Not going to happen. So that's one of the big keys of what you really want to do, and I would encourage you to do, first and foremost. Okay? So number one, if you're looking at exercise ideas, is you've got to tell yourself you do have the time. And, and really, 20 to 40 minutes is all you really need. I would say work out before you go to work. I don't care what it takes. I know you're working 10 hours a day. I don't care what it takes. Don't watch television. You have to give up something to get something. But I'm telling you that to try to work out at the end of your day, not going to happen. So you got to get 
your routine down where you get home, get to bed, take care of the kids, whatever you got to do, go straight to bed and you get up early and go work out. And it will be very, very difficult, very difficult for the first month, maybe even two months. It tells you just 21 days and you'll be used to getting up at 4 a.m. Uh-uh, not going to happen. It's going to take about two months. But you got to do it over and over and over and over again. You push yourself long enough and it'll become a habit. All right? But you push yourself hard enough, push yourself long enough, and it will make a difference. So you want to start out by doing that and then get your body to a point where you can really do well and you can thrive. And that that is the key. So your exercise routine is going to be extremely important. Now, the ideas I would say for you, I would weight train three days a week and do your entire body split it up like for example chest and arms on mondays wednesday do your lower body and some shoulders or maybe just do lower body on wednesday and then on friday do your back and your shoulders so you want to, and then oh, your opposite days like tuesday thursday saturday do cardio so you can run go jog get on a treadmill ride a bike go swim do something for 30 minutes so you mix up your, your other parts of your body and you do something totally different. That is going to give you the best balance of what you're looking for. Okay? That really is the key. So if you want to get balanced and you want to really hit your goals, that's the best way to do it. Otherwise, you can walk every day. But if you want to hit a good, you've got to, I mean, you have to hit the weights, I think, to build a good physique that is strong, what we call strong. So the functional movements, all that is extremely important to really give your body what it needs. And I would make that really the key to your overall routine and make that the overall game plan. Okay? Because at the end of the day, your exercise routine is, I think, one of your lifelines. Your eating habits and your exercise routine, your relationships, your sleeping habits, all that, that that's your lifestyle, man. You have to manage that. That is a big key. And you got to keep it as balanced as possible. Puts another hour in the charge. I'd like to thank our producer, Jay Patrick, engineer John Garrison, and the rest of the team. Go tell one person something you learned on the show. Together, we can transform the health of our friends, our families, and our communities. You're listening to the show that helps you get well, stay well, and live well. We're diagnosing hope one person at a time. know you can listen to the asa rx audio experience on spotify and pandora for all the ways to watch and listen check out our show page at asarx.com slash experience hi it's asa i'm giving you a copy of my best-selling book for free to help you in your health journey today i'll pay for the book all you do is just cover the small shipping and handling costs go to asarx.com and get your free book today this episode is over but check episode notes for links to products and services you've heard about on this episode. Thanks for listening and subscribing. Please share the ASA RX audio experience with others and stay in touch by giving us your comment or review.